Hello guys, welcome to Algorithms Made Easy. Today we will be discussing the question House Robber. In this question, we are given that we are a professional robber planning to rob houses along the street. Now, each house has a certain amount of money stashed, and the only constraint stopping you from robbing each of them is that adjacent houses have security system connected, and it will automatically contact the police if two adjacent houses were broken into on the same night. Now we are given an integer array nums representing the amount of money of each house, and we need to return the maximum amount of money we can rob without alerting the police. So we are given with some sample examples and the constraint with the problem. So let's first see what the problem is all about and how we can solve it. So we have taken this custom input in order to fully understand the problem and the cases it holds. We are given an array nums. Which denotes the amount that has been stashed in each house, and we start robbing these houses. So let's first start with the first house. In this case, we get the, all the money that is stashed in this particular house. We get one. Now we cannot rob the adjacent house because if we do that, the police will be alerted and we will get caught. So what choices do we have? We have only choice to rob the house next to this adjacent house. That means house number three with the value seven. So we go and rob this particular house. The total collection till now is eight. And similarly, here also we cannot rob the adjacent house. So we go to the house next to this adjacent house, and here we get the total collection as nine. And this becomes our answer because there are no more houses left in this particular row of houses. But wait a second, can we make more money? By choosing not to rob this house and rob in some other fashion, so that we make much more money than that. So let's get back to where we were. Instead of robbing the house with value only one, can we rob the house with value nine? It fits into our constraints. That means we can leave the adjacent house and the house next to it and rob the house with the value. Nine, so that we can make up the total as seventeen. Now, in this case, the total collection that we have is seventeen, which is greater than the previous collection, which was only nine. So the answer to this problem becomes seventeen. So how can we make sure that we choose the right house to rob? We had two possibilities. From seven, we can either rob the house with value one or nine. How do we choose that? So let's see that. Suppose we are at the last house, that is house with the value nine. We can reach this house six either from house four, if till this house four, the total collection that we had was ten. Then the collection, if we jump from this house to the house six, the total collection will become ten plus nine, because we can rob this particular house as well, as the two houses are not adjacent to each other. Now the other possibility is, we can directly jump from house number five to house number six. Without doing any robbery at house number six, so if the total collection at house number five is equals to not pick, the variable name is not pick, then the collection won't change. It will still be the same at house number six. So at this house number six, what we need is the maximum the two values. We need to find out what is the maximum collection that we can have at each particular house. By finding out two values, the first value, if we rob this particular house, and if we do not rob this particular house, this particular condition will hold no matter at which index you are. We need to find out the maximum value that we need to find at this particular house. This goes back all the way to index number two. Now, at index one, there is no temp value present. That means there is no house. From which you can come to this particular index one and rob this house. So the temp value in this case becomes zero. And as we are jumping from the zeroth index, the not pick value will become the value of the zeroth index, which is one in this case. So for the index one, the value is nothing but the maximum of the zeroth index in the first index. Or in simpler terms, if there are only two houses present. Then the maximum robbery that you can make will be the max of the two values of the houses. That's pretty clear, right? Now, if there is only one house, 
then that particular house is the only house that you are robbing so that becomes our answer as we are using the previous values to find out what will be the next value we are effectively using a concept which we already are familiar with which is dynamic programming so now i'll recommend you to code this particular approach with the explanation that we discussed now and if you face any issue you can come back to this video and see how it is done now it's time to code this particular approach so as discussed we would need an array where we can store the intermediate result which will be the same length as the nums array so we'll define that first now we know that the base condition are for index 0 and index 1 the constant states that there will be at least one house so we can directly put the value of at index 0 equals to nums of 0 now if there are two houses only then we can directly return the maximum of the two values and if not we can just put the value at dp of 1 with the maximum of the two now comes the part where we start the iteration with index 2 till the end so we know that the value at this particular index would be nothing but the maximum of the value at either index minus 2 that is leaving one house in between the two houses plus the current value or we choose not to drop this house and put the value of i minus 1 directly into this particular house at the end the answer will lie at the last index which is nums dot length minus 1 now let's run this code for all the sample test cases so it ran successfully let's submit this so we forget about writing one base condition when the length is 1 then we can simply return nums of 0 so now we can submit this so it got submitted successfully the time complexity in this case is o of n as we are going through only once to all the indexes and the space complexity is also o of n as we are using a dp array to store the intermediate results we can also choose to modify the input array and have no need to use this dp array i'll recommend you to try this out and comment below if you face any issue so that's all for today do let us know your thoughts in the comments below thanks for watching this video see you in the next one